In this tutorial, we're going to see how to use the new Mesh Deform feature in Godot 3.1. We're going to see how to create a skeleton for the character using the skeleton 2D and bone 2D nodes. And then we will see how to create a skin to rig our character. That is to say, to bind the polygons that we draw to the bones of our skeleton. Let's get started. In the project, you will find two pictures. The first one is a reference of the Godot bot that we're going to use to place the various body parts in the viewport, in the scene. And the second one is an atlas of the individual body parts that will make up our character that we're going to create as polygon 2Ds and that we're going to bind to our skeleton. In Godot, let's create a new 2D scene. We are going to place the GBOT reference in that scene. I'm going to make it a sprite here and I will select, make it transparent by going to the visibility in the inspector, modulate, and I'm going to lower the alpha value to make the character half transparent. You can also tweak the color to make the character separate from the pictures we're going to put on top of it. Then in the toolbar at the top, use the lock icon to lock the image. This way we can't select it inadvertently. We can start working on our polygons. Now I'm going to rename the root node of the scene, go to the bot, it's going to be a node 2D and save it in my file system here. The first thing we want to do is to add the individual body parts as polygon 2D nodes. We are going to group them under a node 2D to keep them organized. So select the Godot bot node, control A, and add a node 2D there. We're going to name it polygons. Control A to add a new node under that, and you want to look for polygon 2D. It's a node you can use to draw polygons on the screen in general, but if you look into the inspector, you will also see the skeleton and texture categories, suggesting that we can use a texture, a sprite in this case, and assign the polygon to a skeleton. Select your GBOT pieces picture, now we're going to drag and drop it into the texture slot. At this point, nothing will appear. We have to edit to create our polygon. And to do so, you have to use the UV button up there in the toolbar. With your Polygon 2D selected, click the UV button, which will open a new editor. I'm going to reset the zoom level here, and we can get started working on the character. We're going to start by creating a polygon for the torso, the first part. You can work in a few subcategories in this window. To create polygons, you want to go to the Points tab. Then the toolbar changes and the pencil icons allow you to create the vertices that make up your polygon. That's the one in the left that you are looking for. Click to select it, then you can zoom a little bit using the zoom slider and click to create points anywhere. You want to click to create individual vertices that surround your character. Uh, while I'm doing that, I want to explain that this is the, the part that's still a little limited as far as the user experience is concerned. You will not find all the tools that you have to create and edit polygons compared to a major 3D package, something like Blender. So you want to roughly surround your character with vertices. It will take a bit of practice to create the right number of vertices, but once you're done, you cannot edit the edges. You cannot split the segments at the moment. So be wary of that. For example, I made a vertex that I didn't want to add an extra vertex on the hip to make it easier to later connect the vertices on the joint of the characters between the, the hip and the chest. Once you are done creating your polygon, the tool will automatically switch to the edit mode. You can select and move or rotate points with that tool. 
you can click and drag on any vertex with the arrow tool selected to move the points. With that, if you click on OK, you will see your polygon in the view. At this point, you might be tempted to change the pivot points on the polygon. You don't have to. Press the W key to select the Move tool and move it onto the character's torso. Note that you can move the GBOT reference under the polygon node, not as part of it, but can move otherwise the polygons node above it to overlay the GBOT reference on top of the polygons that you are going to draw. This way it will be easier to make them roughly match. You want to rename your polygon nodes as well. This one is going to be torso, for example. From there, you want to do the same for each and every body part on the character. So I'm going to duplicate the node, select torso, press Ctrl D, and I'm going to call this one arm L. I'm going to use the capital letter L for the left side of the character's body and capital R for the right side to differentiate the left and right arms. Uh, having conventions when you are doing animation and rigging and very strict ones in your project is quite important so that it's easy to retrieve the body parts from the code, for example. So with the arm L selected, I'm going to click on the UV button in the toolbar, make sure that I'm still in the points tab. I'm going to select the polygon creation tool and I want to work on the left arm, so the one that's in the background. From there, I'm going to roughly outline the arm. In general, I try to make the points count on one side match on the other so that it's easier to connect the polygons afterwards. Note that this is not mandatory, but you will need some uh, practice and fiddling with the vertex count just to make the character and the mesh deform as you'd expect. On such a sprite, for example, it's going to be a bit hard to deform uh, around the hand, but it will be a little easier to deform around the elbow due to how the sprite is made. You might want to split the hand into a separate sprite in this case. It's easier when you have a real wrist, but for a robot where you don't want the final animation to be too organic and the deformation, you might want to separate the hands into a separate sprite. I'm going to press OK, so I, I've got my arm now. Now, as we duplicated the torso here and removed and recreated the polygon, Godot has not generated an internal polygon for us. Let's go back to the UVs here and you want to go to the polygons tab. This is one of the tricky parts about using the system right now when it comes to the UX. We don't have a tool to fill the polygons to draw all the mesh that we want to have in this 2D mesh. Because this is a 3D object if you want, or internally this is a mesh just like you would have in a program like Blender. In this view, you can create the polygons that will make up your polygon 2D. So for that, you're going to connect the dots. You start by clicking on one of the vertices and you click on the other vertices to connect them together. There's a lot to say about creating good meshes and you will need maybe some 3D experience for that, but the basic way to do it is to connect the vertices that are facing one another. And to get better deformation, we'll see that we will need more polygons. So what I want to show, I'm not going to fill until the end and click OK, just to show you that now that we recreated the polygons, we can see the parts where we're creating these polygons. This is because when you are working with meshes, it's not like working with a sprite. You need the polygons to be available somewhere to exist to map to your initial texture. You are not just printing or displaying the texture on screen, you are mapping it on 3D meshes. And that's quite important. So when you create these polygons, Godot creates the corresponding UV coordinates for your object. But when you first create a polygon 2D node, 
Godot is going to generate that for you. Just be wary of that. If you duplicate the nodes, you will have to create the polygons. Now, this is not that big of a deal because as we'll see in a moment, in order to properly use the mesh deform feature, you will have to create that mesh manually most of the time. Right now, you have to create it polygon by polygon. In the future, hopefully, we will have some options to generate or to batch create or fill the mesh that we have here. But for now, we have to do it the manual way. With that, we've got one example of creating the torso from scratch and the arm by duplicating one of the polygons and recreating the polygons one by one. I'm going to drag the arm behind the torso in my hierarchy just so that it displays behind the torso. And with that, you want to do the same for all body parts on the character. I'm going to skip ahead, adding every time a new polygon 2D, assigning the texture to it, and then creating the polygon. See you in a second. Here we are with all the body parts created. I'm going to select the polygons node and lock it, but also disable the ability to select children. These are the two neighboring icons in the toolbar. From there, even with the select tool on, if you click on anything in the viewport, you won't be able to select it inadvertently because we are going to create the skeleton next. Select the Godot Bot node, press Ctrl A and search for Skeleton 2D. Then the skeleton itself doesn't do much. You're just going to see a new menu option in the toolbar, but you need bones or joints to make your skeleton work. So let's do that. We're going to select Skeleton 2D, Control A, and look for Bone 2D. We're going to add a number of nodes that create our character. The first one, let's call it Hip. The little shape that you see in the view represents your bone. Anytime when you have the bone by itself and it doesn't connect to another joint, so it, you can't control its length easily, you can use the default length property in the inspector and increase it to make the bone bigger. Let's go to 70 pixels, for example. Then the way bones work is the shape is just a helper for you to select a part of your character and easily rotate it and visualize the rotation and the scale. But you are just working with a joint, a point in the 2D workspace. Let's place that point on the hip. It's going to be the pivot for the hip. And then we want to add a new bone as a child of this one. So Control A, add a bone to D. This one we will call torso or chest, for example, and you can press W to move your chest pivot point at the base of the chest. Anytime, press Q, you can select the hip and move it and you will see that its child bone moves with it. If you want to move a parent, just be wary that the children, you will have to replace them afterwards. And we're going to do the same, duplicate the chest, and we're going to go to the character's neck, have it as a child of the chest, select the neck node and move it to the neck of the character. One thing you'll notice is there are warning signs next to the nodes. And if you click on them, it will tell you that you need a rest pose for your skeleton 2D. This rest pose we're going to add once we have our entire skeleton working. Next, select the skeleton 2D. We are going to create the hierarchy for both arms. So you can start by creating it under the skeleton 2D and then nesting it into one of the nodes. I'm going to do that. So control A to add a new bone 2D. I'm going to call it arm L and place it around the shoulder. Then duplicate the node, call it forearm L. I'm going to move it to the elbow and finally go to a hand L node. It's going to be a child of a forearm that starts at the wrist. 
then going to rotate that node to have the bone pointing down in the hands position, increase the length to something like 60 pixels. The reason I'm rotating it is when we're going to create that rest pose, this is going to register this state for the bone and for my hand L as the zero doubt position and rotation for the node, which will make it very easy to reset the skeleton to that pose. If we rotate the hip, you will see that the bones that are children of it are going to rotate with it, but not the arm. For the arm to rotate with the chest in that case, you want to drag the arm L under the chest. And from there, rotating the chest will rotate the arm so will rotating the hip, but rotating the neck will not rotate the arm. You want to duplicate the arm L node. It's going to duplicate it with all of its children. I'm going to expand the node tree here and move that to the arm right. I'm going to place the nodes first. I'm always using the W key to use the move tool from the toolbar, rotate the hand right, and then rename the node. Arm L will become arm right, for arm L, for arm right, and hand L, hand right. With that, I'm going to skip ahead once again, create the remaining parts of the skeleton to show you the setup for the legs and the head. See you in a second.